talking about why probiotics will not work unless you do this one thing first and which probiotics are the best for you to use. My name is Andrew Martin. I'm a human biologist and I've helped hundreds of people heal their gut, balance their hormones, lose weight, and optimize their health. So let's talk about probiotics. When to take them, when not to take them, which ones are right for you, and which ones to take depending on what you are struggling with. So 60 to 70 million Americans each year are suffering from some kind of GI disease. That could be a disease like Crohn's, it could be uh, you know, IBS, or it could just be your, your regular bloating, indigestion, stomach pains, right? Constipation, diarrhea, things like that. 70 million Americans. And 40% of Americans last year at some point had to stop routine activities like running errands, doing their exercise routine, uh, spending time with their family, or going out with friends and being at restaurants. 40% of Americans had to stop doing that because they had some kind of GI flare up during the year. And that is incredibly frustrating. If you're watching this video and you've been there, I'm sure it's been frustrating to you to have to put off some of your regular activities that you like doing because you are in pain and uncomfortable. And most people's first instinct when they have one of these GI flare-ups is to turn to a probiotic, but it doesn't always work. And that's because probiotics are only going to work if you have low, what's called commensal bacteria. So commensal bacteria are the bacteria that live on our skin or inside of our gut, and they essentially live in harmony with us. They're beneficial to us and we are beneficial to them. And so we need those commensal bacteria. When you have a low amount of commensal bacteria, adding a probiotic can, can bring up the commensal bacteria and, and repopulate some of the healthy bacteria that we need for a healthy GI function. And that's why they work so well after antibiotics because when you go through a round of antibiotics, a lot of the times you're going to kill off a lot of those commensal bacteria in the process, right? Antibiotics, they kill bacteria. And so then you, people need to repopulate them and they do that with a probiotic. But in many people, the reason why they're having GI issues like gas, constipation, bloating is not because they have too little bacteria. It's because they have bacteria in the wrong place, they have too much bacteria, or they have a completely separate infection. So when they take a probiotic, they could actually be making the problem worse because they're adding bacteria, which is what a probiotic is, right? Probiotic is the bacteria. They're adding more bacteria to an already overgrown system. So let's talk about what to do instead before taking a probiotic, and then when it is appropriate to take a probiotic, which ones you should consider, okay? So step number one in any good gut health healing protocol is to remove any overgrowth or infections to start. We have to, rem we have to, to knock out those bad bacteria or infections, yeast, fungal infections, um, parasites. We have to knock those things out first before adding a probiotic or else it will just be ineffective and at, at best it'll be ineffective and at worst it will be harmful. So the, the, the first thing to consider in, in this video is not about lifestyle changes or, or foods to eat. It's specifically about probiotics. However, it is critical that you're sleeping well, that you're managing your stress, that you're eating, uh, that you're not eating tons of ultra processed foods and that you're eating high quality foods because if you're doing that and taking a probiotic or trying to kill off some of these infections, it's just not gonna matter. Right? You have to have those things as like a baseline of support, okay? Now, let's say that you have that down, right? You're, you're eating well, you are managing your stress, you're sleeping, and you're still having issues and you want to get rid of some, some of these overgrowth or infections that could be going on that are giving you gut issues. The supplements that you would take to kill off one of those overgrowth or infections depend on what that overgrowth actually is. So we're gonna focus on three of the most common ones uh, that we see all the time, H. pylori, candida, and SIBO, which SIBO is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And then we also have just general dysbiosis where you have an imbalance between good and bad bacteria in the, in, in the gut. Okay, so here are some of the common symptoms for each one of those specific problems. H. pylori, you'll also often see bloating and burping, um, discomfort in the upper or, or, or middle stomach, nausea, loss of appetite, uh, belching um, often, and then sometimes even uh, stomach ulcers or ulcers in the GI. For candida, we'll see things like fatigue,
cravings for sweets. Bad breath is a really common one. Um, you'll get this white coat on your tongue sometimes if you have candida. Brain fog and joint pain. Those are common symptoms for candida. And for SIBO, we actually, we're going to break this out into two different types of SIBO. So type number one is, is methane dominate SIBO, which is uh, characterized by constipation, essentially. So that would be the predominant symptom of methane based SIBO. So constipation, bloating, abdominal pain, uh, and discomfort after eating, probably discomfort as well as the day goes on. So like maybe you wake up in the morning, you feel good. And as the day goes on, you feel worse. Um, and then we have hydrogen dominant SIBO, which is characterized by diarrhea instead of constipation, the other symptoms will, will likely be the same. Bloating, abdominal pain. Um, you may even have malabsorption issues with SIBO. And then we have general overgrowth of bacteria, which is not any specific one of those problems, but maybe we just have too much. Um, and we can experience bloating, gas, constipation, or diarrhea, indigestion. Okay? And so as you can see, it can be complicated to figure out which one of those specific problems is going on, or it might be a completely separate problem. Like there are numerous issues that could be going on inside of the gut. Um, and the best way to, to figure that out is to test with a gut microbiome test. And I'm happy to help you that if you want to, uh, there's a link in the description if you want to book a call with me and figure out if you do have any of those issues. But either way, there is a lot of issues that could be going on and contributing to your, your gut problems. So let's talk about how to kill off each one of those specific problems that we just talked about, H. pylori, candida, uh, SIBO and general overgrowth. For H. pylori, the main supplement, and by the way, we're using all herbal-based supplements. I'm not talking about antibiotics, which there are available if you want to take the traditional medicine route, but that's not what we do. Um, so we're talking about uh, supplementation and herbal remedies that you can use. The most common one for H. pylori is mastic gum. Okay, so we use mastic gum, berberine, uh, and then a specific type of, of licorice is called DGL. Um, and you can actually get that in a supplement called Pyloriplex, where it's a combination of those things. And so if you are struggling with H. pylori, um, it would be a good idea to go through that. That is one that you probably want to test for, specifically H. pylori, if you're having the symptoms above, because um, it could be a little bit more serious. Um, Candida, the supplements that we use to address Candida would be capricilic acid, oregano oil, uh, one strain of of the lack of lactobacillus, which is actually a probiotic, which I know I mentioned not to take the not to take probiotics during this phase, but it actually is effective at um, helping with candida. Uh, and then a lot of those are actually in a again a, co a combinational supplement. Um, the one here is called Candida Biotic that I'm showing. For SIBO, we have methane dominant SIBO, which again is characterized by constipation. The supplements that you would want to use to overcome that would be berberine, allicin, and oregano oil. And then we have hydrogen dominant, dominated SIBO, uh, again, characterized by diarrhea. And you would just want to use berberine and oregano oil. So essentially removing the allicin from that specific protocol. Okay. So typically you would do that protocol for 30 to 60 days, sometimes longer. You want to do it until it's, until you have eradicated the problem. That's the idea, right? Because people are generally jumping to their probiotic while they are still having these overgrowths. And that's the issue. So we want to make sure that we are killing off anything that needs to be killed off first. Then after that phase, we can start thinking about what probiotic to add for some people. You may even want to increase your fiber intake, use digestive enzymes, and normalize bowel movements after going through that kill-off phase and before taking a probiotic kind of in between as a phase two. Okay? Um, it depends on, on the problem, but we do that a lot of times with our clients where we kind of separate it into three separate phases. So Let's say you get to the point where you need a probiotic, right? You've killed off the overgrowth and now we need to use a probiotic. So probiotics will be broken down into the genus, the species, and the strain. An example of that would be Lactobacillus acidophilus LA14. That would be a genus, species, and strain of a probiotic. Now, multiple strain formulas have actually been shown to work better than single strain formulas. So you wouldn't just want to take one strain of a bacteria. You'd want to use a probiotic that has multiple of those strains in it because we want to get as much diversity as we can and repopulate. Now, the only exception to that would be Saccharomyces, Saccharomyces boulardii, which is Saccharo B, you might see it as sometimes, um, which we'll get to why you would use that as a single strain, but that would be used as a single strain formula. Other than that, you're going to want to use multiple strains. It's been shown to be more effective. Now, the data are mixed, suggesting which strains are the most effective, and it doesn't really seem to matter. The best thing to do, though, would be to know which bacteria you are low in 
and then pick a probiotic that addresses, you know, that specific deficiency in bacteria. So if you have, you know, if you're low in lactobacillus, you might want to have more of that. Or if you're low in bifidobacteria, you might want to have more of that. And those two are the most common, by the way, lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. Um, species are and strains are the most common that you'll see and have been shown to be very effective. Those would be used if you are struggling with bloating and constipation. So you just take a normal uh, probiotic at that point with those two strain uh, with those two genuses. Sacro B, however, again, like I mentioned, it would be used as a single strain and is often used after taking antibiotics and with antibiotic associated diarrhea. So it's really good at helping you control um, diarrhea, even the occasional diarrhea or traveler's diarrhea. Um, and so Sacro B is really effective at that. It will also uh, help reduce gut permeability, or you may know it as leaky gut. Um, so it actually can help kind of heal and prevent some uh, permeability of things slipping through the, the GI wall and into the bloodstream or vice versa. And then it'll also improve the immune system in the gut. And what's crazy is 70% of your immune system lives in your gut. So if you're getting sick often, uh, you know, it, this might be something that would help you uh, with your immune system, even with your skin. Um, both those bacteria could help. So as a recap, lactobacillus by phytobacteria, if you're struggling with bloating and constipation or gas, right, um, as a second step. And then if you also have diarrhea, then you might want to consider taking sacro B as well. Um, typically, after a kill off, we'll call it the kill off phase, which is phase one, we'll use a high dosage of probiotics, like 200 billion CFUs, which is colony formulated units. Um, and then we'll back it down. We'll back the dosage down after two weeks to 20 to 40 billion as a general uh, rule of thumb. So like a lot of the ones that you're getting at your pharmacy are just not nearly enough to really help you. Um, and then for sacro B, we're talking five to 10 billion CFUs. And then the last thing to be aware of here is that some of the, the probiotics that you take may contain dairy, gluten, soy. And so if you are sensitive or allergic to those, you're going to want to avoid those specific ones that have that in it. So be aware when you're looking at that. Um, if there is anything that you're sensitive to in the probiotic, obviously don't take that. So really, a, a probiotic should definitely be a part of a good gut healing protocol. But it needs to be used at the right time and in the right dosage and with the right combinations for your specific symptoms. Now, in addition to that, it also needs to be paired with proper sleep, stress, uh, lifestyle, exercise, nutrition, right? Those things are all going to be important and aid to this. And like, if you don't have that base of support, none of the supplementation matters. So you, we got to have that in order first, and then we can go through the process of killing off any bacteria overgrowth you know, maybe potentially regulating your bowel movements and then adding in a probiotic as well as some things to finally heal up the gut uh, wall and make the, the GI tract function better. And you have yourself a gut healing protocol that's going to help you um, not only reduce your bloating, constipation, and diarrhea, but also um, get you to the point where you are healed and the issues, those issues don't come back. Okay. So if you want more help healing your gut, getting rid of bloating, constipation, diarrhea, gas, and more direction on that, you can click the link in the description, book a call with me, and we'll discuss what you're struggling with, what your goals are, and see if there's something that we can do to, to really help you out. And if not, I hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, and I'll catch you in the next one.